This project is going to be a little unique because it's going to be made of oak, but it has to hold water. Any guesses what it is? That's right, an aquarium stand. Our first step is to rip our 3 quarter inch plywood for the bottom and inside dividers. We do this as soon as we get back from the lumber yard so Kevin can use the truck as a workbench. Next, Kevin will lay out four oak 1x8s that will make up the top. He uses a framing square to make several lines on all the boards that will be used to align the dowels. Rather than use biscuits on my glue up for the top, I'm going to use dowels. I've got this very old, it's probably 30 years old, self-centering doweling jig. I got it set up with 3 8 inch um, inserts here for 3 8 inch fluted dowels. Dowels are just so much stronger than biscuits are, so it'll add to the overall strength of this top. And um, I really should have a stop collar on my drill, but I don't have one, so I just put a piece of tape on there to mark my stopping point. I've got this lined up with my marks, which I took a square and just made several marks on each piece, so they will line up as long as my my edge marks up right on those lines. Here's the two inch fluted dowel that will go in there, put a little glue on it in the flutes which will really solidify that as a joint. And then I'll put glue on the edges, clamp it all together. This will be much stronger than a typical top glue up. So now I'll just con continue with my holes on down the line being very careful to mark this edge. On these fluted dowels, I just get a little bit of glue, spread it around on there, then I'll pound that in a little bit. Well next we are going to rip these one by eights down to the two and a quarter, a little heavy, uh, a, a little more than two and a quarter because we have to run them through the planer when we're done. But these will be the rails and styles. Next we're gonna set up a stop block because we have uh, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces the same length to cut, so no sense measuring each of those individually. That's just a good way to make mistakes. Now we have to run all the pieces for the face frame, rails and styles, through the joiner just to get rid of the rough edge from the table saw. trying a little experiment how I can get my styles to all be exactly two and a quarter inch. So I have duct taped these together and I'm going to run them through Kathy's favorite tool, the planer. See how it goes. It works pretty well. I think I'll do that again in the future. Well, it's time to drill some pocket holes for the face frame. OK, 
Okay, here I've got the face frame on the bench just before I glue it up and, and pocket screw it together. Just want to go over everything. You can see the pocket screws. Um, of course, this will be on the, the inside so these won't show. I've got the saw kerf cut here for the Z clips, which will hold the top on. That way the top can expand and contract over time in humidity conditions. And everything's marked out um, just exactly the way it needs to be, so these doors will be exactly the same size. Time for Kevin to do some freaky fast glue up. Alright sports fans, here is our glued up top and our face frame. I took these inside overnight so the glue could cure real nice in the heated house. Out in the garage it gets pretty cold here in Michigan once the fire goes out, so I just wanted that glue to really have time to set up. Today I'm going to do some sanding on these and then we will continue on the side panels. I just want to go over the steps to make a nice straight clean cut on our top. So. Step one is I'm gonna make my marks and do the actual cut on the underside because with a circular saw, the, the most tear out is gonna occur on the top. So this being the top in this instance, there's gonna be a cleaner cut on the back side. I'm also gonna put masking tape on both sides which will reduce the tear out quite a bit. And because I am just using a circular saw and a straight edge, step one is gonna to be to use a framing square, make a nice straight mark there. That's where my cut is going to be. And I'm going to put the masking tape on this. Cover up that line. I can still see it well enough to use my straight edge. Okay, and I've got tape on the underside, which is the actual top side of our piece. And then I have this little strip of wood here that I cut. One and nine sixteenth inches is the exact size from my blade to the outside of the edge of the fence. So if I just use this as a gauge and then clamp my, my straight edge to the workpiece using that line. I'll clamp this down and this is what my saw is going to ride up against. So I'll take this out, clamp this down, run my saw through. Very little tear out on this side, which is the underside in the first place. And I can already feel that the bottom side is smooth as a baby's butt. One extra thing you could do here, which I've done on this, this piece, is to clamp just a sacrificial piece of wood along here. So when the saw blade comes through, any tear out on the very end is gonna be on this piece rather than this piece. We love this new item in the shop. It's a rail guide coping sled and it makes milling the ends of the rails much easier. We'll put a link to it in the show notes. Got all the pieces cut and milled for the rails and styles on the sides as well as the doors. Um, the sides are going to have two quarter inch oak panels 
and the doors will also have an oak panel, kind of the shaker style that I that I typically do. And next I'm going to do some glue up. After the glue sets up, then we can drill the holes for the adjustable shelves. Also cut the inner three-quarter inch plywood for the insides, and those will have adjustable shelf holes as well. And then on each of the sides on the rear, we're going to cut a rabbit that will receive the oak planks for the back. We are making a saw curve in each side panel for the Z-clips that will attach the top. Kevin has the dado cutter set up for the thickness of the 3 quarter inch plywood. He is cutting the dado that will receive the bottom. Here he has moved the fence and will use the dado cutter to make a rabbit to receive the back. Okay, next up is to put some holes in here for adjustable shelves. We're going to do that on both of the end panels and also the inside plywood panels. We need to cut some pocket holes in the inside of the side panels so we can attach them to the face frame. Kevin is cutting the inside panels to the correct height using masking tape to reduce the tear out. Now I'm set up to drill the holes in the plywood inner panels, inner side panels, and I need the holes to line up so since this is going to be set into a dado, one quarter inch, I've got this little spacer that I flush up here at the bottom before I clamp this down and then I can start my holes and they should line up perfectly with the outside panels. Now we are ready to glue up the carcass. Notice the use of the clamping squares to ensure the box remains square during the process. Because of the weight this cabinet will hold, we are installing oak joists under the top and also under the bottom. The 
The back of this project is made of 9 16 inch solid oak planks. We always make the face frame about an eighth of an inch wider than the cabinet so that we can trim it to size after it's assembled. Kevin is using a Craig jig to make the holes for the soft closed hinges on the doors. Well, here it is. Beautiful. What is it, Kathy? It's an aquarium stand. Yep. Going to hold three quarters of a ton of salt water down in Tennessee. Yep, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. One of our super fans from the show is driving all the way from Tennessee to pick this up tonight. So I had to stay up all last night, Christmas <laughs> no. night, to get this thing done. No. Santa got nothing on us. <laughs> anyway, there's going to be a 75 gallon tank on top and a, I think, 25 gallon tank underneath. And then on the sides, I don't know, he's going to keep his whatever. Fish food? Oxygen tank and whatnot. Oh, right, right. So hopefully it doesn't fall apart. I used extra nails, number 10 sinkers, and I just <laughs> nailed this top right down. Right. No. And it's uh, solid oak. This is one oak stump that I whittled down into this. So it should be, it weighs 3,000 pounds. He's got to put extra joist in his basement just to hold this thing up. <laughs> No, he No, doesn't. he's built on a slab. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's, anyway. It's pretty. Very pretty. Nice oak project. That's all I got to say about it. Smells that. good. He's going to finish it himself because he wants to... Two things. Number one is it's uh, about zero degrees at night right now. And to keep this place heated out here, <laughs> I would have to get up every two hours and throw logs on the fire. And that's not happening, so... He's going to, going to finish it himself, and that way he can kind of match it to the trim in his house. So that's why we did it unfinished. I've got one little bit of light sanding to do, and then it's ready to go. Uh, I did install these soft close hinges. Very I nice. like those hinges <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he can also pick out his own hardware and put it on there, but it's ready to go. Ready so, to go to Tennessee. Yep. Maybe you'll take it by Graceland. Be cool. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope maybe you got some ideas or inspiration. That's about it. Please leave us a comment. Subscribe to our channel. Hit please. the bell so you're notified when we have new shenanigans out. Mm -hmm. With the holiday and stuff, I'm not sure when this is going to get out and when our next one is going to be. Um, if we get some feedback, what you guys are liking, then we'll know better what to do next time. And if we don't get any feedback, maybe we'll just. Tighten up for a long winter's nap. Watch some TV. <gasps> oh. Eat some Christmas cookies. Yeah, they're gone. But until next time, keep, keep your, your biscuits, biscuits dry. dry. This is so pretty. Cheese.